Well, hello and welcome back. It's been a couple of weeks since we recorded a video, but uh, we've been chit-chatting and are excited to be here with you guys today um, to share something that, hmm, it's been on my heart for a while just because um, I actually have had a ton of women request uh, over the years that Ella and I do a talk on body image and what that looks like. And it may or may not surprise you that, um, you know, what we're going to talk about and how our answers might differ than, you know, what other people are saying about body image. But um, yeah, this has been a question that I get a lot um, as I've had women over the years who have had daughters go through high school and um, they've come to me, I think, almost for mentorship on how to approach body image issues um, with their teenage daughters. And so, like I said, this has been a much requested video that we do. Um, it's been something Ellen and I have talked about a ton. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to share Ella. I'm excited too. Um, yeah, we, we have been asked a lot about this and I think mostly because personally, I've never had an issue with my body I've never had body dysmorphia I've never hated the way my body has looked I've always loved my body and I think a lot of that stemmed from being taught to have like just a very natural stance with my body my body doesn't do anything to me my body is my vessel my body helps me my body is my vehicle that I use to navigate through life and it's it's my temple at the end of the day um <laughs> <laughs> so I've never been like oh I just hate my body um mm -hmm. I've never I used to have friends when I was in high school and oh, before you get into it before you get into that mm -hmm. I want to like segue this conversation because I know exactly where you're going with this but I remember the day that this came up um between you and I someone had requested that we do, I think she, um, specifically, it was a client of mine who had a daughter in high school or just finishing high school and, um, had gotten to know you Ella, like quite well from just kind of bopping around the studio and stuff. And, um, I remember bringing this to you and saying, Hey, like it's been requested that we, you and I do a live video chat on, um, body image. Um, and that was the first time you ever said to me, like, it's burned into my mind. You said, I didn't know girls had body image issues until it had been really recently. Do you remember that conversation in the car? I think we were going, like we were out going shopping. We we're going to like momentum or something. We've had a lot of conversations about this. <laughs> I, I'm I'm sure I do remember, but I do remember one time I was with a group of friends and it was like that scene from Mean Girls when the one's like, my pores are huge. Oh, my <laughs> My thighs and then it's like one to the next to the next and they're like going in a circle sharing what they hate about themselves and I was like the girl who was like my knit or I have really bad breath in the morning that's what she says <laughs> <laughs> so it like got to me these girls were just like complaining or they they were complaining they were talking about things they didn't like about themselves and it got to me and I was like and they just kind of like looked at me waiting for me to say what I didn't like about myself because it's so normalized. And I remember saying, you know, I actually really love my mom. I've been super blessed and she's always taught me to love my body. There's nothing about my body that I don't like. Sure, there's always areas like to improve, but I've never I've never looked in a mirror and the first thing I do is point out something on my body I don't like it's just yeah, not that's a the first toxic great mm -hmm. that people have to to always be looking for what is wrong right that that actually points to a whole bunch of things in life but yeah. um that that shocked me when you told me that um that you had just realized that so many people were so unsatisfied with themselves because you must have been grade like a 10 or 11 I'm gonna say yeah I was like 16 17 and yeah um and like at this point I had had a different group of friends I went through quite a few different friends in high school I think it's pretty normal you're figuring out who you are you're figuring out your your tribe of people who you belong with 
And I remember every group of girlfriends that I had, it was the same common thing that they all had in common was that they talk about how much they didn't like themselves, the things they didn't like about their bodies. And I always just kind of sat there and was like, and some people were almost offended about it as well. Um, I think because it's so, it's not normal to talk about how much you hate your body, but it's normalized for sure. Mm -hmm. And almost I less normal to talk about how much, like if you do love your body, right? Like people almost look negatively on that, which is so crazy. It's true. <laughs> it's very true. And I don't understand it. I even remember um, going to the beach with a group of friends and we're all wearing our bikinis and I didn't think anything, you know, I just took off my clothes. I didn't even think twice about it. We're at the beach, you know, we got to where we were setting up our stuff and I was like, okay, I'm going to take my stuff off, go in the water. And all of the girls kind of just paused and looked at me and they're like, oh, your body's so nice. No wonder you're so quick to like take your clothes off. And they're like, the one girl like, pointed out oh yeah look at my stomach the other one was like look at this look at my stretch marks look at my cellulite and I'm like why I almost was shamed for ha not having anything bad to say about my body and liking my body and taking care of my body mm -hmm. this it, it makes me think so much of um like I love I you know I love working with women it's my favorite thing to do and I especially love talking to moms about the impact of how they not, not even what they say, but how they act around their, their daughters, but also their sisters and their aunts and their cousins and their friends and everyone. Right. Um, I forget too that communication or like interpretation communication as a whole um, it's only a very small percentage of it that is words and a lot of it is like body language and your energy how you show up it's not just the words you say so you can tell your daughter to love their body and that they should take care of themselves but if you don't do that yourself and you're you look in the mirror in a really negative way you know like she'll see that and she'll do the same thing to herself yeah if you're always trying to um you know I say uh everything when I look back from this point that I'm at right now when I look back over the things I've done I say to you all the time oh I've had a lot of happy accidents things that have worked out right that I couldn't have predicted and that would be probably the number one thing is never um, always doing my best, the best I could at any given time to take the best care of myself and not from a place of not loving myself, but from a place of, I'm going to be with myself for a long, long time. So I want to take the best care of this. You said this vessel so that it can serve me and, and be with me on this journey through life. Right. And so that is something we, when I think back to you growing up, we didn't have I actually can't remember any specific body image conversations that we had. That would have been the first one when you were in grade 11 and someone asked me about it. And so I brought it to you, but I don't remember having any specific conversations about bodies, but we just taught you guys to take care of yourselves. Just like we taught you to take care of your teeth, right? Only floss the teeth you want to keep, only move the body you want to keep. <laughs> I think it also kind of shocks me that like your body wants nothing more than to serve and support you and wants you to enjoy this lifetime that's why it's here it's the house to your your soul your your spirit it's here for you to enjoy the physical form and why would you spend your time hating on it when all it wants to do is love and serve you mm -hmm. it wants to take you places so you can experience new things so you can meet new people so you can have feelings and experience life on like the full spectrum of just everything it, if you're constantly just hating on yourself how are you going how are you going to enjoy your life it doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. uh, so many people 
it's almost ingrained into women in society that um it you said it's so normalized that we be at war with ourselves mm -hmm. and at every age too mm -hmm. when you're like and it starts when you're oh my gosh it starts so young so young in like elementary school even you're not allowed to wear certain clothing they they shame girls bodies and they cover them up and I don't think there's anything I I do believe in modesty I believe that you you want to protect your energy but I don't think there's anything wrong with a six-year-old girl wearing a tank top there's really nothing wrong with that but that almost as a child it embeds in your mind that like my there's something wrong with my body I need to cover it it's mm -hmm. gross mm -hmm. uh, it's like an unsaid thing and then even into like puberty as well we're like your body's changing and no one really talks about those changes like you kind of learn from the education system they teach you a little bit and then you have that awkward conversation maybe with like your mom <laughs> but she tells you from her lens and what she experienced in her life it's not like you're taught like your body is changing and it's a beautiful thing because you're you're growing into womanhood where eventually one day your body will be able to house another another human um and these changes are necessary for that. It's almost like this weird unsaid thing where like, you know, you're changing, everyone knows you're changing, but it's like not talked about really. And it feels like shameful for a lot of people. And then even in high school, everybody's bodies are developing at different rates. You have girls who look like grown women and you, you have other girls who still look like they've barely even gone through puberty yet. And people just think that there's this certain way you're supposed to be they don't accept where they're at I find it's not bodies talking about bodies in a very neutral aspect it, or neutral tone is not normalized at all it's always like what's wrong yeah that that is one thing we've had lots of conversations with the women in the studio about and specific, specifically pardon me you know margot palmer who i adore the heck out of um, the cutest thing i love you know, where we've talked a lot about not because there's this whole big push in society right so you you said it's normalized for um women and girls to have really negative reactions towards their body and to always look for the things that are wrong. And that has swung so far the other way where we're always talking about body positivity, right? Oh, we're going to be positive about our bodies and we're going to, but that's not like, I don't think that's either. exactly. I was going to say, it's not necessarily okay either, because what happens when somebody is at risk um, for health complications due to where they're at and um, you know, instead of being like positive or negative, why can't we just be neutral and just say, okay, these are actually the things that we know, um, give us a better experience of ourself, right? It's not a weight. It's not a shape. It's not a size, but it's what is your, what is going to give you your best experience of this incredible thing we call life in mm -hmm. your body it has to have this neutral you have to have a neutral position on it in my opinion and you have and to celebrate right like in my opinion you have to celebrate um from where you are and All i haven't body. always been like oh i'm just in love with my body i'm so sexy like like there's a time <laughs> place for that. but but i've always had a neutral stance where like my body isn't something i'm constantly thinking about worrying about how others see it mm -hmm. and I didn't quite finish what I was saying I like went through like puberty and everything in high school but even like pregnancy and mm -hmm. and even like aging how women age and like wrinkles aren't okay like it's, mm -hmm. it's in almost every aspect of a woman's life where we're conditioned almost to believe that they're I yeah conditioned to think that there's something wrong with us but I don't I think a lot of people are quick to be like oh society and the media but like we create that we accept 
that, you know, it wouldn't exist without people. Um, so ultimately, like those are like real thoughts and opinions that people are putting out there and we accept them. Um, mm -hmm. And um, like, but exactly, it's swung so far the other way where we're like, this is so wrong. Just love yourself, love yourself so much. But you haven't even gotten to that neutral point yet, I think for a lot of people. <laughs> You know, you went from hating yourself to like, I'm just going to love myself, but you haven't gotten to the point where you're like, I'm okay with who I am. I have a body. This body is to help me. And, and yeah, just being neutral with where you're at. And then eventually, cause I, I used to really not like, I at one point did have a negative relationship with myself, not because of you, but it was because the people I was hanging around with, I thought, hmm, I'm the only person that doesn't like who I am, or, or yeah, I'm the only person that um, doesn't have this bad relationship with myself. Maybe I should, because that's what everyone else is doing, you know? And I, um, so I got to this point where I had a really negative relationship with myself, and I had to get to just being okay with myself to now be at the point where I'm at now where I'm like, I genuinely love and have affection for this being. <laughs> she supports me. She helps me. She's healthy. And that's what I love about her. She has the ability to go on a long walk. She has the ability to try new activities she's never tried before. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. I actually heard something recently that I think is amazing because we always talk about association, right? You said the people that you were hanging out with at that time all had, they were all negatively picking themselves apart, but this thing I heard. And that's not anything, that's not anything wrong with them either. I just want to say that like yeah, that's yeah. something that they were also taught from other people. And they, usually it's passed down long They're They aren't bad people because of that. It that's was just, it was all they knew. Yeah. So this, this thing I heard said that we, we become like our association, good or bad, doesn't really matter. But now what they're finding is it's not even just the association. So it's not say that group of four girls that you hung out with. It wasn't just them, but you were, you were being conditioned almost by also their kind of the first circle outside of their circle. And then the circle outside of that. So you were being conditioned by not only your friends, but their mothers and their grandmothers. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Isn't that wild? Yeah. And pick up the traits of the people in your immediate circle and their circle and their circle. And even though like I had you as a really positive influence, and even when I think of grandma, like I feel like she has a pretty neutral stance. Like I've never heard her talk negatively about herself ever. Like couple times she's like oh I need to fuck my mustache hairs but like that's so normal you know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like so do I, you know yeah <laughs> like she's such a pure soul um really but because like it's so normal for people to talk negatively obviously like your influence was outnumbered mm -hmm. on if that makes sense yeah totally I actually I'm grateful. I think I had, I grew up with a really, really great mom and dad. Cause I didn't, I had some struggles, but they weren't because of anything my parents did or didn't do. Like it was nothing my parents did wrong. Like I think now looking back, my issues that surrounded food came from my complete lack of control in all the areas of my life. And just not knowing how to be grounded to something, right? And so it's I, when I, so I had an eating disorder, but I didn't, it's not because I didn't like my body, which is so crazy. I was going to ask you that. I was going to say, do, do you think your eating disorder stemmed? Because some people are like, I don't like my body and, you know, mm -hmm. I want to thin, but I don't think it was that for you, but I wanted to clarify that. No, I can say a hundred percent. Um, and this might shock people, but I think we don't talk about this. And when you look at statistics on young women with disordered eating habits, I actually looked them up because I was like, Oh, I wonder what it is. 
And I wanted to tell you this because this is wild. So they say 50, like 53% of girls age 13 have, um, like they are unhappy with at least some part of their body. And that grows to nearly oh. 80% by age 17. 80%. I, I, I believe it, but I wow. Like we're talking about this and we're like, oh, you know, like talking from personal experience, but the numbers check out with that. Yeah. And then get this. So, so we're talking a little bit about, cause I had a, I suffered an eating disorder in, when I was younger, one third to one half of all teenage girls admit to disordered eating habits admit to I mean I even did like I wouldn't say I was never diagnosed with an eating disorder or anything like that but yeah I admit to it too I had poor eating habits I mm -hmm. didn't know I didn't know how to eat for my body mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of people um, and like you taught me to always have a pretty neutral stance with food, but again, like that association I had, it was mm -hmm. like, you know, you don't really eat, you know, people kind of make fun of people when they're eating, like, <laughs> well, that's so gross. Or like, you know, or like, I, oh my gosh. Eating. So you, and you like, people make fun of how people eat as well. So you like, don't want to eat in front of them. And then when you do eat, it's like donuts and and like <laughs> shit, you know like teenage girl we aren't taught to eat for our bodies we're taught to eat for other people almost if it's so sense. crazy and I knew this would go a million different ways sideways sideways in this conversation but I remember sending you and your brother to elementary school with phenomenal lunches like real food not packaged food um, real nutritious, healthy options. And you constantly bring it home because people thought it was weird because it wasn't fruit by the foot or it wasn't, um, you know, lunchable. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, if you didn't have lunchables, then I, which is so, is not just absolutely insane. And it, like now you couldn't even pay me to eat a Lunchable. And <laughs> I, I want to eat only the weird healthy foods because I they make me feel the best. And even now, I think a lot of girls in like the university age, my age, um, they their relationship with food has to do with the relationship that they have with themselves. I think that they go hand in hand with each other. And yeah. um if you don't have a good relationship with yourself, you won't have a good relationship with food. So like right now, I'd say I have a very neutral relationship with food. Like food is food. If it's to fuel my body, to give me energy. And I'm going to eat the foods that make me feel good in mm. the long run. The food that's going to give me energy for the rest of the day. The vegetables, you know, the the options that are maybe a little more pricier in the grocery store but offer you more energy and vitality whereas I think a lot of people their their relationship with food is that you know they're gonna eat what's good but they they don't always eat what is um like the the it's like the short-term gratification rather than the long-term um discipline that later leads to even more gratification if that makes sense it's really incredible to hear you talk about that because that is a lot of the work there was this pivotal point in what I do where I realized we can, I can teach women everything about nutrition I can teach them all the signs behind nutrition and how to eat but if we don't do the inner work to repair people's relationships with themselves they will never have a a healthy relationship with food and that comes and out in some exercise ways. as well your relationship yeah. with yourself leaks into every aspect of your life mm -hmm. even like your relationship with your family your relationship with money your relationship with food mm -hmm. your relationship with school like everything it, you everything is a reflection of how you're doing internally 
Mm -hmm. Um, going back to when you were talking about eating certain foods at school and people being like, Oh, that's weird. Or, you know, hiding, making fun of the way you eat now at that you're older. And I love how much inner work you do, obviously. And it's really inspired me to continue that on my, like in my own journey. Um, don't you just look at that now and think that actually is just such a reflection of how they feel people are perceiving what they're eating and how they're eating. Like it really isn't when people have these reactions, it really isn't about Ella eating X, Y, Z, right? <laughs> it was, if I of- was eating that, I would be worried that people would be looking at me. So I'm going to point out this person eating this. <laughs> To project my own feelings onto them. Yeah, exactly. Or, you know, in the cases where girls really struggle with their body image and they know, you know, it doesn't take, there's so much information available now. It doesn't take much for people to know that if you eat a a clamshell of cookies for lunch, which is not uncommon to, um, (laughs) we have to circle back around to this in one second, but when someone is insecure in in the way they feel and they're constantly picking themselves apart and then they know that the things that they're choosing aren't in alignment with what they say they want or aren't going to get them to the place they want then they feel insecure about what they're eating right so then the natural thing is to pick on well you're doing that right you're eating that and that look how weird that is because it takes all the attention it stinks (laughs) (laughs) i it's like your gas stinks from all the crap <laughs> you're putting in you that's literally rotting your intestine. Hey, literally, one of my favorite things to do was to play this game when you guys were younger, um, to play this game with my clients and to just, because I love to make people laugh and I love when people are joyful and I don't know, find things funny, but I would share because you guys would share with me what what kids brought for lunch. It was like, <laughs> was in the lunch box today. And I would literally share this with people while they were warming up. And it was the craziest thing. Like, I remember saying like, oh, you never guess what, like, this is why I still help. Well, not anymore, but up until recently, I would still help Eddie pack his lunch because I was like, at least that way, I know he's making really good choices and he's not bringing a bag of chocolate chips and a banana (laughs) (laughs) to dip the chocolate chips or to dip the banana in the chocolate chips. Look at, look at, I would hear these things of kids eating like a box of cookies for lunch or, oh my gosh, there were so many weird and crazy things that you guys would tell me. I was like, like, I remember there's like a girl who brought a bottle of ranch, like (laughs) crazy things. Oh, it makes me laugh because on the inside, I'm like cringing, like, oh my God, that's so not balanced nutrition. And like, how are these kids having energy to think all day? But it's wild. But coming back also to that, we could literally go on and on. And this, we were going to talk about body image, which we are talking about, but um, talking about just like nutrition and the role that plays in how we experience everything everything, right? The way we eat um, is it directly affects how we think about ourselves and how we feel about ourselves, which affects how we show up in relationships, how we show up for kids, how we show up at the gym, how we feel about what we're doing. Relationship where like the way you are affects the choices that you'll make for your food, which then trickles down into everything else but also the food you eat affects you and how you make your choices. So if if you're like, I think that's why so many people struggle with like mastering their reality and being a version of themselves that they truly enjoy and like just loving life in general. It's that they haven't mastered themselves and they haven't mastered the food they eat, but it starts with fixing your relationship with yourself so you can fix your relationship with food. And then when you're eating the good food, then you have like the energy to show up well for your family. You have the energy to go to the gym. You are just more vibrant and full of life. It like really, that's like the blueprint for it. That's the blueprint to having a happy, healthy and wholesome life is that first you fix your relationship with yourself so that you can fix your relationship with food and really like food also affects your sleep everything it affects all those main pillars 
I feel like I cannot stress enough how much like new neutrality to food in your body, how important it is mm -hmm. for everything, your whole life. It's really crazy how I've thought about this so much. Um, you know, I've done some breath work with a breath work coach and obviously have a very sound understanding of nutrition, but eating and breathing are two things that in society we do really, really passively. And then we end up having to play defense, right? Like people try to undo what they're doing with nutrition by going to the gym. And, you know, we've all heard this saying, you can't out train a bad diet. And it's so true. Yeah. <laughs> people are constantly playing defense. And that I think has a really, really negative effect on their relationship with themselves. And right? by in this place of lack, like if I just was this way, I'd feel better about myself instead of being in this neutral state where nutrition, like I, I really believe that from a young, young age, we should teach children how to be neutral with nutrition and how to make, um, what word can I use here? Acceptable nutrition choices majority of the time. Like to, to teach them the way we teach Jack. Acceptable is the right word because think about what's acceptable to like the average person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Make nutrition choices that support the type of like, obviously when I think of this, I'm thinking of Jack and I'm like, I can't. I can start to plant the seeds at age seven, right? Because we are really primarily in control of what he eats, how he eats, when he eats, like we dictate a lot of that for the mm -hmm. most part. But um, to teach him how to, you know, be more neutral about food, that food is, we need whole food and we need soul food. Um, we need- It isn't good or bad. It yeah, just there's it's very, very neutral, right? Nothing is inherently good and bad. And this is probably the number one thing I see when women come to me for help is they've been taught somewhere along the way that these things are good. These things are bad. These things are clean. These things are dirty. And I'm like, why are we labeling food in any way? Right. If you want, like a chocolate bar isn't bad and it's not dirty. It's just more calorically dense than you know, a plate of vegetables and chicken. And so it takes a lot out of the budget. Let's say if you have a daily budget of how much food you should eat, one chocolate bar takes a big chunk out of your daily budget versus, you know, all this other food that you could be eating. If you're eating, you know, eating whole foods, um, lots of variety, lots of plants, you can eat a lot, right? But it's not, not nothing is inherently good or bad. And there's I people forget eyes when people talk about clean and dirty food. Cause I'm like, food is not clean. Food is not dirty. I 100% agree with that. I think too, um, it's the feeling associated with what you're eating, when you're eating it and how you're eating it. Um, totally. Or like waking up in the middle of the night to like hide from your family that you're <laughs> eating a whole bag of chips. Like, you're not going to feel very great about yourself. And because you're not feeling great about yourself, that food is going to impact you negatively rather than like, oh, there's a bag of chips. You want some chips? Eat chips. Mm -hmm. There's nothing but... wrong with chips. You can have them. Enjoy them when you eat them. Don't beat yourself up over it, you know? Yeah. But don't put a whole bag and that's your dinner, you know? Like... <laughs> It's it really comes down to the devils in the dosage, right? You can have chips, you can have ice cream, you can have pizza, you can have all the things that people classify, we'll say the people, society classifies these foods as dirty. Um, but, but the devil's in the dosage. So if you eat a whole bag of chips and you do that That's multiple so times. Good. The devil's um, in the dosage. It really is, right? Like you can have, I mean- we have chips and a movie night. Yeah. Like I never, I'd feel completely neutral about it. Like if I want chips, I'll eat chips. If I don't want chips, I don't eat chips. I never feel 
bad about a nutrition choice. And I never feel like because they're having chips, I have to have chips because I might never have chips again, right? When you repair your relationship with food, everything becomes really neutral. And you can, you can actually, like, I, I'm not sure if it's seeing it through the lens of your values, right? Like I value um, my relationship with myself. I value my, like making sure that I'm putting deposits in the, the, in my bank account of, my self-image, my self-esteem, but what that is, is not how I look or what size of clothes I wear. What that is, is am I keeping the promises I made to myself? So if I value living a really long time, I always tell people, I want to stay out of the nursing home. My mom worked in a nursing home. We've all known someone in there. My goal is to stay out of the nursing home as long as humanly possible, right? To hopefully never, ever have to go there. So if I value that- I will let you go there. You, you better take me you to your house. You. <laughs> I'll be living with you. But if I value longevity and health and well-being, then that that's what I'm I am most definitely not saying here is that I'm never gonna have chips, I'm never gonna have ice cream, I'm never gonna have chocolate. But it's easier for me to make a choice uh, if I want that and to not feel like I have to have it because that person's having it, right? Like when everything becomes neutral, you don't have to rely on motivation or self-control because everything just becomes a question. You may want to, but you don't have, it's the feeling, it's the feeling associated with it. And like you said, the dosage of it, mm -hmm. if it feels good to do it and you're going to enjoy it amongst like company, mm -hmm. even if it's bad, if you're if you're like super happy while you're eating it, you're creating a memory with your family. Say you're having cake for like a birthday, like that's not bad. That's no, amazing. no, it's and it's incredible. Beautiful. Like there's so much research now on um, social engagement, and I like I recognized this long, long ago, coming from a giant French Catholic family where they celebrated around food, right? Anytime there's a get together. And this is like, Most not cultures do it as what, say, what what brings us together. That. Totally. So to always be the person and I speak from experience here, like I've been to many, many family functions um, when I was younger, where I didn't eat the food because it, it wasn't clean, maybe to my standards. Everything I talk about is based on almost always something I've experienced myself, but that's not good either. So I didn't eat the food with the family, but I missed out on the social engagement and the joy, say the joy that, that your grandparents get from feeding you something and the connection that you feel over enjoying something amazing together. Do you know what I'm saying? Like that like outweighs the caloric value and the, the ingredients list. Mm -hmm. sure. absolutely and There's when it comes to emotion, emotion associated with it definitely where people are concerned with maybe getting a result um it doesn't matter what you do sometimes right those connection times are probably the sometimes for people um what matters most is what you do most of the time so if most of the time you eat wholesome unprocessed foods enough protein, lots of plants, lots of colors, lots of variety. Well, that matters more if you do that most of the time than if you enjoy a dinner out with your spouse or you're a dinner out with your partner on a Friday night, right? Mm -hmm. Or cake for your kid's birthday. Like I love when women have come to me and been like, oh, I, you know, I was doing really good. Then I had cake. And I'm like, okay, but if you just put, let's just, let's just sit in this for one minute you know, the cake isn't the reason you're not getting the result you're looking for, right? It's not the cake one time. It's everything else. <laughs> yeah. I think too, like just going back to when we're like, oh, good and bad food. Um, good food can be bad too. You know, if you're, if you don't diversify the foods that you're eating, it's not good for you either. You, you want, to have everything and enjoy everything and life is so short why wouldn't you why wouldn't you just eat what you want when you want to 
in a mm-hmm. way that supports you and your vessel and your experience of life. Mm-hmm. I think like what I've seen over years is that like just kind of going back, I I really wish that we taught more about health and nutrition, like actually what moves the needle from a young age. And I'm not sure that that could even happen. Oh, like the Canadian food guide. We <laughs> not the Canadian food guide. Definitely not, but it's incredible food. Mm -hmm. And we're taught that dairy products are good, that like cheese and yogurt and like, you have to eat lots of that and you have to eat lots of meats and stuff and vegetable, but like, yeah, you want to have those things, but also like they should also teach. It's not just food. It's like how you eat the food the power yes. that you have with food it's the emotions right I had a conversation probably about a year ago with a friend where we talked uh and it was a phenomenal conversation we we're talking about how in society and women not men this is one thing I see of women men probably some but we're way more emotional in our approach to everything and women tie emotion to food right to the food so we're talking about having a social a social feel whereas masculine is more logical which is why exactly. like it really makes sense that they they don't deal with the same issues as us because you know they're just thinking logically rather than emotionally which exactly. isn't a bad thing either you know <laughs> you so need- women tie emotion to specific things how they feel when they eat ice cream, how they feel when they eat a burger, how they feel when they eat a muffin. They tie their emotion to that thing, that food, versus understanding the emotion that comes from you and I going out, having great conversation and having an incredible meal where we have a dessert also, right? You don't have to skip the dessert or the bread, but <laughs> where yeah. where we we tie our emotions to each other, right? It felt so incredible to me to connect with you that way. Not the, like, we don't look at the food and think, oh, that made me feel so good eating that. And I think there's like this discrepancy there for people. Yeah. Where they, women, I'll say. And I'm not saying that men aren't emotional eaters because they might be, I'm not sure I'm not a man. So I- couldn't tell you, but, <laughs> but I think that's like a big, big thing for women for is sure. food is nu- nutrition. Food is energy. Like the food we consume is energy that allows us to, I've told people this for years. When I nourish my body in a healthy and positive way, it allows me to do more difficult things. It allows me to be really engaged in a difficult conversation with you. It allows me to be there when one of my children is going through a difficult time and the emotional toll that takes on me, I need energy and bandwidth for that, right? The the food that I eat and the, the nutrients I put in my body allow me to move my body in a positive way. And I'm not a typical overeater ever, Um, like if I don't, if I'm not mindful and aware of my nutrition, which I track my nutrition quite regularly, just because I would, I, I am most women. We're not, it's not that we're overeaters. That is the problem often. It's that we're under eaters. And so I know when I don't eat enough, if I don't eat enough, and especially if I don't get in enough protein in a day, those will be the days that I'll miss out on the gym right? Those will be the days that I won't move my body in a positive way that when Dave says, Hey, do you want to take the dog for a walk? I'm like, Oh, you go. (laughs) But it's because I actually just don't have enough available energy in my body to do that. And because you don't have that available energy, what your brain uses, which means the choices you make, those are probably the days you're more likely to make choices that don't align with the way you actually want to show up. Absolutely. Those are the days that I want to eat nothing but crackers and scroll social media for ungodly amounts of time. (laughs) Which like we need to talk about this because it's a very real thing and we are not perfect. 
at all. Um, no. we, under, we understand that this is actually a legitimate struggle that large majority of, of women face. You even said it within the numbers and that wasn't even women as a whole, that was young girls. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, girls grow into women. So exactly. I've always believed that we can't manage what we don't measure. And that's not not coming from an obsessive perspective, but from a logical, we can't manage what we don't measure, right? How do we know what direction we're going if we have, if we don't know okay. where we are? Exactly. And it's not like a, like you said, obsessive measure. It's just a map to mm -hmm. understand where you but are. when I give you pressure, my nutrition, like when I manage my nutrition and measure it according to how I want to show up, um, I feel like I have an abundance of energy, right? When I don't manage my nutrition and I under eat and, and I talk about this because when women want to make a change, when women are struggling with body image issues and they want to make a change, what do they do first? they start cutting everything out, right? I, I'm guilty I of this. that I always use examples from my training studio, but I've, I've seen everything there. Like mm -hmm. having a client come in, wants to, is not happy with the image she has of herself. So she wants to make a change. So what is the first thing she does? She signs up to do, she asks, not signs up, requests to do five or six training sessions a week and then eats nothing but chicken and salad doesn't eat breakfast, doesn't eat anything for lunch, chicken and salad, and then nothing. And then she's showing up at the gym for a training session. Like probably barely knows her name <laughs> because she has zero bandwidth to actually have the energy. Like she just isn't nourishing her body. You say right? you're like setting yourself up for a failure. Of course, you're going to go, you're going to spiral from that because you're not giving yourself what you need. And then of course, then you're going to feel terrible that like you didn't stick to what you were doing, but it was never sustainable to begin with. Yeah. And I think that's probably the the number one thing that harms women's image of themselves, right? It hurts their, it hurts their self image. It hurts their self esteem. It hurts their body image even more because they're like, okay, I desperately want to be different than I am, but I can't even stick to that. And so nutrition is, nutrition is so fascinating. It's such an interesting topic. And I don't think there's any really specific exact formula. This is exactly right. This is exactly wrong, but um, there are lots of mistakes. Everybody that is different. Everybody needs something different. It's really, it starts with developing a connection with yourself and your body so that you understand what your body needs. And when you understand what your body needs, you can nourish it in the way that it likes. And when you do that, then you can show up the way you want to. Mm -hmm. Then your life, your life will be worlds different from what it currently is. Yeah, exactly. But I think for some people, like they want an answer, they want a formula, but there is no formula you or the solution to your own problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I think though, um, the inner work is, is it's not the first thing people want to do. Well, it, it's, it's simple. It's very simple, but it's not easy. Mm hmm it's a choice you have to make knowing that you are going to uncover things about yourself that you don't like. Um, and that's why you're hiding from them in the first place. But mm -hmm. once you just get them out there, once it's all, all the skeletons are out of the closet, you're like, you know, it's there. That's the mm -hmm. worst part of it. Then you mm -hmm. figure out where to go from there. It's, just, it's unknown because yeah. you've been ignoring it. It's unknown. And unknown is scary, but you can easily make the unknown known by just acknowledging it. That's mm -hmm. really, that's like more than half the work with inner work is acknowledging what you're ignoring. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's bring it back. So we're gonna, we went down a really big rabbit hole, which was amazing, but 
Um, <laughs> let's bring it back to uh, body image. And so you had this experience when you were in grade 10, 11, something like that, a couple different experiences. Um, okay, two things. How did that shape you kind of from that point to this point? Because I, I definitely think that you have you have an incredible, um, relationship with your body. Like it's, it's phenomenal to see. Um, so how did that, like, was there a moment where you looked at that and were like, okay, this is actually wrong. So did you make a conscious choice to, you know, make sure that you went the other way? Yes. And I remember the moment, um, I'm going to butcher this a little bit, but Dr. Joe Dispenza speaks of, um, people when making, um, people will associate like a memory, a place and a time, usually the three together when they've made a specific, it's like a pivotal moment in their life that they'll remember the rest of their life of when they decided to make a change. And it's mm -hmm. true. And, it, and it's when you no longer identify with something you've been identifying with. So mm -hmm. for me, that was, I remember the setup of my room I remember literally it was like a summer day it was sunny I remember the sun coming in my room and I remember looking at myself in the mirror and I was just like thinking um like you know I've been I've been hating myself for so long and look where this has gotten me like I'm no happier I try to convince people to see this version of myself that I see that I don't like when most of the time people don't even see it like you're your own biggest critic but like I hate hating myself mm -hmm. it's tiring it's exhausting it takes up so much of my energy like I feel exhausted telling myself how much I don't like myself and and I could see that it exhausted other people when I would bring it up. And mm -hmm. then I remember just looking at myself and thinking, like, I've never, I've never told myself that I love myself. I don't, I don't remember a time. I've never, I've never done it. And I remember, like, looking in the mirror and being like, okay, like, I'm going to do this. And... <laughs> And it was weird. It was really weird. And I was like, I love you. And it was weird. And it was uncomfortable. And like I had never done it before. It was unknown. But that one specific moment was all it took to then like get 1% better. Mm -hmm. so and how old were you when that happened? That was like after... I had that group of friends where, you know, that was like what we did together. We just like talked about how much we didn't like ourselves and how much we didn't like our lives and how terrible everyone was. And surprise, surprise, they decided they didn't want to be friends with me anymore because I had slowly started questioning. Like I had slowly started, I don't even know where it stemmed from, but this like awareness kicked in where I was like, whoa we really talk about like negative things a lot and then I started mentioning it like oh like you guys are really negative and they'd be like well you're negative too <laughs> and I'm like I know and I don't like it doesn't it like bother you guys and they're like no what's wrong with you like you know <laughs> um and eventually I think because I no longer aligned with them they like I didn't even want to be friends with them anymore but they didn't also didn't want to be friends with me which I mean totally makes sense and then it was that was when it like your association is huge that was when I started repairing my relationship with myself which then also repaired my relationship with food repaired my relationship with you repaired my relationship well everything in my life my life changed so much from that moment on that was really when I started like I used to be like oh I hate optimists like you know like they're just so positive I think they just do it to like annoy <laughs> other people you know 
but actually like that moment was a pivotal shift for me where I really started approaching life from the lens that like I get to choose how I experience this life and I want this to be a good life even though I didn't consciously know that at the time like I want this life to be a good one I hadn't even like fathomed like death and all of that that makes you really appreciate life but I was just like I don't like how I feel and I don't like who I surround myself with and I hate hating me it's tiring it's exhausting this hasn't worked at all for me maybe if I try the other end of the spectrum where I tell myself I love myself doing that enough brought me to that neutral point Mm -hmm. where I heard it enough from myself where it no longer was uncomfortable it was just neutral and now I've gotten to the point where I've it wasn't easy I had to train myself really how to love my body and be more neutral towards it um but uh, so like finding things I do love um watching like little happy moments and catching myself when I feel that burst of love even just like talking with you admiring Jack going on a nice walk catching that feeling and remembering it and then I like plug that feeling into when I would look at myself in the mirror and that allowed me to like fully embody love and and really uh, really really healed my relationship with myself Mm -hmm. and were there any things that you read like was that pre kind of getting into because now I know you've been on a deep dive like inner work journey and have been reading a ton of books like that pertain to that but was that pre that period or post Mm. that must have been pre pre or post what sorry pre or post like when you came to that point had you read anything on self-love or repairing the moment I decided to tell myself I love myself the first time no yeah I was just like, this isn't like what I'm doing isn't working for me. Maybe if I try something else, it will work because I'm exhausted and I hate hating me. It's, it's exhausting. Wow. Yeah. I was so filled with hate that I hated hating. <laughs> it's pretty wild because I think that, like, I would tend to think that is the experience a lot of people have. Like when I look out and I hear the way people talk to themselves and I hear their experiences that they have, I think that's common for I people think- too. And I think that people, you know, you, you think of people one-upping, like people one-up worse when it comes to negativity, right? When someone's like, oh, I don't like this. And they're like, oh yeah, well, I have one better for you. I don't like this and this. And And it just, it's this like vicious thing. Mm -hmm. It's like poison. It is. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Um, Do you think that building a strong base and being like, you obviously got involved in the gym young, like quite young. um, And you had like, you had quite a few experiences. Like you went from being a gymnast to then just training to doing Olympic lifting and then kind of full circle back to, I don't want to say just training, but back to strength training or resistance training. Um, How much of that do you think impacted you? Now I can see that it did impact me, but at the time it, it didn't feel like I wasn't aware of it. Um, I just, I felt strong when I did those things and feeling strong builds confidence Mm -hmm. without you knowing. Um, So like, you know, I wasn't the most phenomenal gymnast or the most incredible weightlifter, but doing things that challenged me physically um, really built confidence that I didn't know was being built at the time but now clearly I'm like oh yeah I I 
can see the impact that it had on me now that I'm I'm out on the other side that I'm much older yeah um what is one thing that you would tell other girls um I I want to first I want to say I think that you without even knowing it, I think that you are just an incredible leader and mentor to a lot of young women. Um, and maybe you do already know that, but um, what is one thing that you would tell, like if you had a young girl that you were mentoring, like a, a 13, 14, 15 year old girl that you were mentoring, what would you tell her about body image? I wouldn't even tell her about body image. <laughs> you know like it, it doesn't even matter just experience life mm -hmm. do what feels good find what you're good at and and do that follow the desires in your heart mm -hmm. and I would also want young girls to know that what other people say about you doesn't matter all that matters is how you feel about yourself so if if you do things that feel good to you, you're going to, you're going to feel good. You're going to be, you're, because you feel good, you're, you're going to be good. Like you don't have to worry about what other people think. If you're good with yourself, what other people say and do doesn't even matter. Mm -hmm. And it's doing those things that make you feel good, that allow you to show up good, that allow you to then not care what other people think. Because I think for sure I doing those things as a young girl that made me feel strong, that developed confidence, allowed me to not, I never even thought about what other people thought about my body. It wasn't until I was in high school where people made such a big deal out of it, you know. But even mm -hmm. then, I'd say my experience, I was very blessed that I didn't. I, it didn't go to the, like the dark extent that it goes for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So how do we keep young girls from experiencing that? Like in your situation um, where you were around a bunch of girls that like, what do you think the answer is there where young girls are um, being peer oriented by those that are surrounding them? Um, what, what do you, what do you think about that? I don't think there's like one thing that you're like, if everybody just did this, everything would be okay. You know, yeah. I think it starts within each household and it's, it's a womanly figure in the household, whether it's you and then teaching your mother how to, which then teaches your grandmother and then the generations to come about body neutrality or whether it's the mother who then teaches her mother and her daughter you know mm -hmm. in your sake like that was you it was you and then you guided your mother and your daughter and then I will then teach my daughter um it it starts with one woman willing to face herself and do the work that allows every other woman in that household to then be able to show up as who she's supposed to be and then that, if that's spread on like a grander scale where there's multiple households that are doing that, you come together and you don't even have to, you don't have to be like, oh, if everyone just loved themselves, like, no, it's not that simple. <laughs> you know, some people don't even know how to do that. Mm -hmm. It's, it's getting, it. you literally, I wanted to say this before, but I forgot about it, but you almost have to be in the trenches to then um, like you have to experience the worst or the opposite to then get the other effect. You have mm -hmm. to know hate. You have to experience hate to and like realize that that's not for you to then be loving mm -hmm. or you have to with everything you have to most people have to be addicted to drugs to realize that they never want to do drugs and that they like <laughs> not doing drugs or like, you know, same with alcohol. It's, it's going to that in my case as well. I, 
hated hating I hated so much that I ended up hating my hating <laughs> hating hating which then turned into love it's going through the trenches to then experience the bliss sorry <laughs> <laughs> um yeah I do agree with you though that it's it takes one person to start the domino effect, right? One person showing up different, one person acting different. And it won't, you know, you might not rub on off on everyone, but yeah, yeah. Like the the you'll find the right people or or you'll influence the right people to change. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Is there anything you want to add before we wrap this baby up? <laughs> it up with a bow um I don't think so I just really want to emphasize the impact the relationship you have with yourself influences the relationship you have with other things and those things also relate um impact the relationship you have with yourself so if you mm -hmm. first master yourself you master everything else and mastering everything else allows you to further master yourself yeah, that's so true. Yeah. Good way to wrap it up, Bella. Um, wow, wonderful. Hopefully you guys, we kind of squirreled all the way around on this one and I knew it would open up some great conversation. Um, and so thank you for listening. Um, we're so grateful for you guys as always and uh, have a wonderful rest of your day wherever you are in the world. Um, and we will be back soon with more great and juicy topics. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>